When I was 20, I had dreams. I wanted to live abroad, explore new cultures, new countries, meet new people, taste new food. That was my dream. But there I was, 20 years old, and living in a town, working really hard, living in a town of my parents, and I felt like I was swimming in a swimming pool. I felt my future was like this straight lane in a swimming pool. The same town, the same husband, the same job, the same parents, the same everything the rest of my life. And I wanted to swim in the ocean amongst other fish of all colors and all sizes. And sharks, because yeah, there are sharks in the ocean. And when I talked about my dream to my parents and my husband, they, they looked at me and they smiled and they said, Rachel, what are you talking about? You have everything going for you. You earn good money, you have clients, you, you, your husband, your parents live close by you. I mean, what more can you wish for? They were right. But I didn't want to grow old thinking, what if I had done it? What if? And so I did. Fast forward my life, I can now say that I've lived in seven different countries. I speak six, almost seven different languages. And I did achieve my dream. And I have new dreams, like standing on a stage like this. Now, how did I do that? I'll tell you in just a minute. First, let me ask you a question. We all have dreams, good ones, bad ones. Do you also daydream about your future? And do you put a deadline on it? Six months, one year, 10 years? Or are you the type of person that says, one day I'll open up my own business. Someday I'll play the guitar. One day, I will lose weight. We all have dreams, but only few of us achieve those dreams. Why is that? You know, I have a mission. I want to inspire people to build their confidence. That's what I do. So I talk to a lot of people, and I ask this question, and I get all sorts of answers. Things like, yeah, but I have a family and kids. I, I can't achieve my dream. Or, I don't have enough money in the bank. Or, I'm too old. OK. So then I say, well, look at your situation right now. Imagine you're living your dream. How would you feel? And then I see sparkling eyes and a big smile. And, and I hear answers like, oh, I can just see myself, my own restaurant with my name and my logo on it. Or, oh, I would just love having my own consultancy career and working from home, picking the kids up from school. And if I wait just a little bit longer, there it comes, a three-letter word, but. But it's too difficult. But what will everybody say? But it's too complicated. Huh, is that true? Yeah, I think so. Oh, you think? Why are so many of us stuck? Because we think too much. But that's OK. We have 80,000 thoughts in a day. It's normal that we have so many thoughts. But it's when those thoughts are negative that they bring us down. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. If you repeat that over and over again, you'll start believing it. You see, our thoughts are stories in our mind. They lead to feelings, and they lead to actions, behaviors. So the good news is, if you want to get unstuck, you have to change those stories. Imagine a first date, a romantic candlelight dinner. You sit across from each other. You look each other deep into the eyes. You feel those butterflies, that chemistry, that click that everybody's talking about. You feel on top of the world. You picture yourselves together in the future, a house together, a holiday together, maybe kids together. The next morning, you wake up and you still have that smile on your face and you take your phone by your side and you expect a call and a message and you don't leave your phone all day long and you even go to the bathroom with your phone and by the end of the night, there's no call and there's no message. Now, there's different options. You could think, oh, no, I will never find anybody. I will stay alone the rest of my life. I'm totally giving up on dating. It's nothing for me. I'll, I'm just going to stay miserable and alone. And basically, you'll feel bad the rest of the night, the rest of the week, maybe the coming months. Or you can say, oh, well, that person isn't right for me. But hey, 
there's plenty of fish in the water, I'll just go and find myself somebody else and, you know what, I had a great night last night, I want to do that again. So you continue and you go on and find your next date. Different stories, different feelings, different actions. So if you want to change something, you have to change those stories. Is it easy? Is it difficult? If it would be that simple, we would all be famous rock stars or movie stars. It takes effort. But there is this saying, if we always do what we always did, we get what we always got. Now I hear you. Yeah, Rachel, but we love to do what we always do. It feels good, it's easy, it's like an automatic robot, it feels comfortable. True, but comfort is the enemy of change. It's when we're uncomfortable that leads to change in action. So take that effort and energy and change those thoughts from negative to positive. And with positive, I mean thoughts that help yourself achieve your goal. Change it from I can't to I will. I'm no good, I'm awesome. Seeing the glass half empty to filling your glass half full. Stop dreaming and start doing. It's like when you bake a cake. Has anybody ever tried baking a cake? I did too. I'm terrible in cooking, but I tried. So what do you do? You follow a recipe. You take a bowl, you take flour, some sugar, mix it together, add some eggs, and basically by the end of the recipe, you put it in the oven and 45 minutes later, ping, your cake is ready. It's the same thing in life. You take small steps. There is no such thing as taking the ball, putting it in the oven, and ping, cake is ready. No, nope. you can't run before you walk. I interviewed this man, and his story is amazing, so I really want to share that with you. His name is Stephen. As a child, he had a stutter. He stuttered. In school, he was laughed at, joked at, ridiculized. When a teacher called up his name, he just wanted to crawl away and hide forever. He felt miserable until one day he made a decision in his mind and he said, I want to change. So he took small steps. First, he called up a phone company and asked for some product information. Very scary for him, calling up, making a conversation with somebody you don't know, but he did. He did it again and again until he felt a bit better. And then the next step, walk into a store and ask for some information. Again, very scary. Seeing somebody face to face, making conversation with a stutter, but he did. And he did it several times. In class, he started raising his hand. Long story short, he is now a very professional public speaker and he loves it. What did he do? Small steps. So think about what can be your smallest actionable step towards your dream. You know, when I moved abroad every single time, I took a lot of small steps. Talking to people, visiting countries, applying for jobs. I never jumped in the ocean. I look at the ocean. I look at what's out there. I put a toe in the water and a foot and another foot. Small steps. You want to publish your book? Start by writing a paragraph. You know, another reason why people are not achieving their dreams is the fear of failure. The fear of making mistakes. Now, who has never made any mistakes in their lives? I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. But I learned a lot as well. Relationships. I had many relationships. Hey, I even got a divorce. Does it mean I will never find a relationship anymore? Of course not. But I learned from every relationship. I learned what I like and what I don't like, what I want and what I don't want in a man. Jobs. I had many jobs, dream jobs that ended up a disaster. Let me tell you about this one time. I landed this job, title, commercial manager of the whole west of France. I was so happy. I could choose um, any car I wanted. I chose a car with so many options it could practically drive itself. I could choose where I live, so I chose an apartment right by the beach. 
I received the latest smartphone, the latest laptop, and I could just see myself driving by the ocean every weekend by the beach. I, could, I couldn't wait to pack up all my boxes and move to this new country. Until several months into the job, I was exhausted. So stressed out, I, nearly a burnout. I, 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 I hardly saw my apartment because I was sleeping in hotels five nights a week. I loved my car, but I had to drive to the physical therapist every week for my back pain. The beach in the weekends, hardly ever, because I had to write so many reports of the past week and plan my coming week. Really terrible. Within one year, I quit and I left. Mistake? Yeah, maybe. Do I regret it? No way. No, because I learned so many things. I learned about the culture, the country, the people there, the job. As a matter of fact, since then, when I go into a job interview, I ask more questions than the interviewer itself. I just want to make sure. But mistakes? I think they're important. I think mistakes are a good thing. We learn from our mistakes. And there is one quote I want to share with you, because I can't say it any better. I never make the same mistake twice. I make it five or six times, just to make sure. It's like when you're driving a car. You're driving, you're going to your destination, maybe a short distance, maybe a long distance. And you have this rear view mirror. And what do you see in there? Your past. Your past is behind you. So it's good to look in that rear view mirror once in a while, because your past is where you come from. Your past made you who you are today. So use that. Use it to create your future. But don't keep your eyes stuck on that rear view mirror, or you will crash. And remember, you are the one driving. You are in that driver's seat, nobody else. You are responsible for your life. So, life changes. And so can you. We can think thoughts and stories in our head that can mean anything. We can take small steps, one foot after the other, into the ocean. We can take a look in that rear view mirror and learn from what we see in there. We all have dreams. So what is your next step? Thank you. Thank you.